A university professor was left sleepless and in tears after receiving a torrent of Twitter abuse for joining a campaign that allows speakers at universities that appear to be hostile towards transgender people. Now, a letter claiming that freedom of speech is good for debate was co-signed not only by Professor Mary Beard, but also by gay rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, who then was rewarded with over 5,000 abusive emails and was branded a parasite by the transgender community. So here's how Mary Beard explains her reasoning in her blog. This is a quote, no platforming unpopular views is counterproductive. It discourages debate and the due dissection of error and pushes views one would like to contest openly underground where they may well flourish better than if exposed to the clear light of argument, which is one of the things that universities are for. Now, she said that the relentless attacks via Twitter actually left her not only crying, but also sleepless, and that she was misinterpreted because she wasn't actually giving her views on transgender people, only on the right to debate. Mr. Tatchell said that he was so exhausted from all the abuse that he received that on his way to an LGBT conference, he actually tripped over and suffered a concussion. Quite the debate here. Should we be talking about transgender people in a hostile way? Should we just not be talking about this at all? It's the right to freedom of speech. What are your views on this? I think that Twitter allows for a very abusive, anonymous response for any little thing. These are scholars that know the value of debate, that they know how to contain a debate with disparate thoughts and positions and that uh, truly believe that from the difference that we have, we can debunk these myths. You know, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the original idea was to, through exposure of this uh, hatred, maybe people can see that the hatred is non-fundamental, is not, you know, not correct. But enter Twitter, <laughs> where the value of a color statement is taken as high as the value of a teenager from a couch. And you can't see one from the other or really know who these people are. I think that that brings the, the abuse. Well, the LGBT community is firing right now for rights. I mean, this is the last of the civil rights that they are actually fighting for here. And there's a science behind uh, transgender people and why they are the way they are. And many people don't actually understand this. So while I understand the LGBT community fighting to squash people that are hostile to transgender people, I also think that there is a place for debate. There is a place for education. University, I believe, is that place. And if, as you say, we are to let people argue and debate it out, then uh, more education would come about. People would be able to uh, talk about the science behind transgender people and squash hostility. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that she was misinterpreted? I think, I think she was. I think she, she's trying to do the right thing. She's trying to show and give room to every opinion in a debate. That's a, the that's a, that's a scholar way to do it. The problem uh, is that is the lack of education, as you mentioned. I think that people, it's very easy to react, to fire out a tweet, to fire out a response in a blog or an email without doing their research. You know, maybe they haven't spent the time that they need uh, founding their opinions. And it's very easy and very immediate to just vent and do what I call desktop uh, activism. At the same time, though, allowing people to speak who are hostile against the transgender community, can this not just spread hostile thoughts? Well, th this is where the debate comes in. I think that we need to weigh the value of an uh, honest, open debate with every opinion present, or we endorse either or. The moment that you exclude one opinion, you're endorsing the other opinion. If you want to do a neutral, debate, you have to have both opinions. The ability of these scholars is to contain it so it doesn't grow into propaganda. And it's just an opinion where people say, we don't agree, I think this and this and that about the situation, and the opposite side says, I think the contrary, and because of this, your, your arguments are uh, wrong because of this, this and that. And the scholars contain that on a productive way where we draw learning from it. But the problem is that we won't be able to do that on Twitter.
What do you think at home? Is a debate good for the issue or will this just help to spread hostile thoughts about the transgender community or any other issues in general? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe and keep watching the Lip TV.